Listen, bitch, listen, bitch, listen, bitch, listen, bitch, listen, bitch, listen, bitch. DC's number one recording studio. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome, right. welcome, welcome to the Swerve Show. Welcome, folks. Hey. It's it, about that time. It is it's Wednesday, May 30th, time. and we are coming off of uh, yes. DC Black Pride weekend. I know oh. I'm exhausted. How about you, Tony? You know I'm exhausted. <laughs> please, why you even ask? I had out-of-town guests and uh, unexpected out-of-town guests. Yeah, and that's I was always a pride <laughs> every I year. I was like, uh, there's no food, folks. I want y'all to know that. <laughs> you I'm might get a, a soda. Cook. You're, you're lucky that you got this room. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Here are your keys. You got that palette. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Peace. Peace out. Enjoy. See y'all. Yes. <laughs> no, I carted them around. My good friends from, from New York. So anyway, I want to check in. I'm Jamil Fletcher, the publisher. I always negate to introduce myself. And of course, we have the one and only Tony Nelson here. Hey. How are you, Tony? Hey. I'm wonderful. I'm tired, but I'm good. Yes, Tony was doing actually doing some work. I was on some main stage. Yes, you were. A couple you of stages. You was a on couple. tour. I was in on a tour. City. I was on an inner city tour. <laughs> right. Yes, you were. Mm. In, in, Black in, 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 in your character. <laughs> in char- I was in character. I haven't been in character in a couple of, well, no, it's been a minute. Any roller, but, t- yeah, I think your sound is on. Am I sound Any on? roller skates? Were you, were any roller no, skates? No, I roller have skates? officially <laughs> retired the roller skates. I passed that age of 52, and Ooh. the roller skates had to be put up. Okay, gotcha. Yes. For so good. Jas- Jasmine Blue is online, and you know she didn't pick them up. Uh oh. She has. You know, Jasmine is you know, doing She's done it before. She's done, she's done Mariah Carey. Yes, she has. Things. She has. Yes, she has. Yes, God. Make sure, yes, she make sure has. she gives you your cut. So, your day, what's going on with you? What's well, checking in with uh, you? Not a lot. Just working. That's about it. Pre- trying to get myself prepared for the new school year as SGA president for student Yes, government. he is. I don't know if everyone knew that your day, Noir, is the student body president of UDC. It's community college. Right. Come right. on. Come on. Come and on. Tony and I are going to be up on campus doing some consulting with yes. the co Yes. Come on. Bring it. Right. 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 <laughs> consulting. Is that what you said? <laughs> That's what it is. Right. With the co Mentoring. Uh-huh. Sure. So yes, yes. Bless God. Amen. <laughs> okay. Well, we got everyone here. So, I want to... Also, remind everyone about our May June issue. Do we have that image, Jacob, to show? With wow. the wonderful Mustang who was in town. Yes, this he was in town. He was a delightful individual. He was so nice. Hey, he Alvin. Is. We love you, man. Hey, Albert. Hi, Ma. How are you? Hey there. Can't wait to see you again. We're going to do some more stuff with him, but it was a great story, and I, I got the chance to spend some extended time with him. Uh, he sang in the hotel. He was in the hotel. He right. He sang the piano and well, sang. Well, he took me backstage. I mean, back in his little <laughs> dress he took, room. He took you backstage. And he, and he sang. <laughs> and he sang. <laughs> I mean, and he sang. And he sang. It cost me dearly, but and he <laughs> sang. Well, that's an, I'm, I'm not old enough for that, for You're that not, story. No, no, he but, just, but seriously, no, he sang. I, seriously, he I has do, a beautiful voice. I think people really should know that Mustang is actually a really, 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 really nice guy. Um, oftentimes, we, we get people who are in his field of work or caliber, and um, they come off extremely pretentious, and he is not that. He well, he's a great guy, and he's got amazing. a great story, and he said he's getting a lot of good feedback from them. So, yeah. so let, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. The one story I do want to draw attention to uh, in this this particular issue is about uh, Abounding Prosperity. It's, a, it's an aid service organization in Dallas, Texas, and they do some really great work. Uh, and that story really talks about the challenges they had. I wasn't aware that there was an arson against their building really? uh, oh, wow. a while ago. Uh, and, I, and I expressed to Kurt that, you know, you should have reached out to everyone in the community so we could help you. But they're really thriving down there in, in the midst of that, that, that challenging struggle around, you know, their, their rates. Their rates are still so high. I don't know if they're as high as, you know, what's projected around the country with the one out of every two African-American man, gay man being projected to be HIV positive in his lifetime, but wow. it's a challenge. So anyway, so anyway, we do have, I want to give, give kudos to Racine and give a shout out. I, know, I think we have our image. Of course, the Ask Racine show is always the first, is it the first uh, Wednesday of every month? That's, and that's, so that's that June correct. 6th. Mm-hmm. So everyone, please come on out and join uh, Racine. She, right. It's a comedy uh, special. And I'm going to be a showcase. part of that. Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be a part of that. Yes, I am. You, I are, wanna... you are DC's one of DC's queens of comedy. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, you, you said it right the first time. <laughs> the. I want to make sure. Oh, ow. <laughs> you said the. Maxine, you know what he The first time. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I got a few dirty jokes. But speaking of jokes, you know what I found interesting? I didn't know Samson was on Sister Circle today. Yes, he right. was. Yes. I didn't see it. I didn't, see, out, it. I didn't see it either, but I saw his post about it, and yes. I just told him, 
You know, I, I really just shout out to Samson McCormick, Samson McCormick who used to live homegrown. in D.C. And I told him, I posted on his wall that I'm extremely proud of him because he reminds us to dream. Oh, yeah. And right, he is right. pursuing it, actively pursuing it. And it hasn't been easy, but he's doing it. And, and Samson's going to be a big star, so I just oh, yeah. don't forget the little people when he gets there. <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I shouldn't tell us on, TV, on radio, but I had a dream once. A couple of weeks ago, I wrote him, sent him a message. He said, wow, that they did a remake of Sanford and Son, and he was Lamont. And oh. I wrote him, and he said, wow. oh, I said, you need to make that happen. Really? Yeah. So, Samson, if you watch it, make it happen. Yes. Shout out to Samson. It was funny. The clip I saw, he kind of read Funky Deneva. Oh, did but, he? But oh. I'll leave that for anyone to, to see on demand. Oh. I, I usually tape the show, and I never watch it, so I'll finally have a reason yeah. to watch it. So. I'll watch it. Hey, Strong J. Kelly. Oh. Yes, Adrian Wise, thank you for tuning in. Teresa Beavers Jackson, who oh, is right, my Teresa. promoter for Black National Did she Patrick come in? System. Thank you for tuning in. All right, well, let's keep it moving. Um, let's do a recap of DC Black Pride. Now, what, oh. what did you folks think about this? Who wants to go first? Oh, you, well, well, Tony, I, you were working. So tell us, what are your thoughts? Well, I was working. I had an amazing weekend, and it's it's really powerful to see so many people of color come and just in one one building mm-hmm. in one space. I know. First of all, I want to say that that Zigfield's party on Friday night. That's the one I couldn't get in because they yeah, doubled I, the price I when I got to the tour. Well, you I should have you should have been on. All of a sudden, it was now forty dollars, not twenty. You should have. <laughs> I was like, oh, is that my price? Or you should have been so. on. T- you must have tried to. You must have went through the front line. And I was like, Daryl, I know Daryl and Tony. Hello. Oh, that, that wasn't that was they for two dollars. That Ciao. barely worked. Look, that barely worked for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but it was that was the first night, and it was um, that I, first event that I went to. I wasn't working that event. But I did go, and it was just absolutely amazing. And I, I, I don't know, I, I don't recall another um, African American promoter um, having reigns over sick fields like that. I don't recall. Oh yeah, and you know, Daryl is really. I mean, yes. kudos to Daryl. He's really built up his 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 machine. You know, right. he, he really has his outreach. He yes. really has captured. I will the say nightlife. this. I, I mean, we re- you really have to tap, give give Daryl Wilson his grace. Yes, because when when. No shade when D and I'll say it when DC Black Pride was slipping. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh. It was. Ooh, it was not, slipping. We're, we're not gonna go there. We're not, we're, I mean, we're <laughs> a little bit. Call, it's we're okay. Call a thing, a thing. When gotcha, it was slipping, gotcha. Daryl Wilson kept it going, and so he because he built up such a rapport and built up such a following. He is he is part of the reason that we we have been able to it's have still, a reemergence. It, it's still existing. Well, right. Well, well, you know what was interesting though. There were. There was an influx of people who rarely come to the city. Mm-hmm. Everyone came to the city this weekend. Right. I Which believe was that. was amazing. They were, I saw friends that I haven't seen in 15 years. I believe of Zigfields. From around the country. Zigfields was, if there's any indication, I definitely, I mean, it literally took me right. an hour and mm-hmm. 15 minutes to yeah. get down the stairs and out the door. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, yeah, I heard. I heard all it was about am- it. And it was amazing. Yeah. And it, everybody, it was just an amazing, amazing night. And they worked really hard. And Miss Beavis Jackson, she was a great producer of shows. Right. And I was really grateful. It was a really, really nice time. I did not get to meet... Uh, Genuine, like I thought. Oh, of he, course you should have. He swooshed <laughs> past. Was he me. in and out? Was he? he was, no, I mean, literally, onto the as stage I'm coming back out, to the I limo. Said, well, I'm, in, I'm in the dressing room. Too. He literally swooshed past <laughs> me and he hit the stage. Not as tall as I thought he was. I oh. know, but. No. Well, good, good, good deal. Thank well, you, Robert York, for tuning in. Oh, Robert York is in. The only, the only thing that I that I was a little disturbed by because we had a booth at the host hotel. Mm-hmm. The community building piece wasn't really as popular, uh, and and in in previous prides and and we and we'll talk about this because we got special guests, but we're going to tell you who they are. Um, be, there was no really one collective event where the mm-hmm. entirety of our community came together, like, like we used to like, have. I mean, it was like so the, segmented. There were no women at most of the events we went to. You're talking to like like right. we used to have the big festival. There was always one thing, or like a, right? One big festival where you have all of the, ta- the where yeah. everybody came. And I participated. thought that. W- well, I thought that was what the uh, point of Monday's event was. Sort was. of, but, 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 but about, I think but the you, rain. But if you notice, there but, weren't that many women there. But historically, it's all that that festival always happened on Sunday. On and Sunday. it normally happened mid. It started at like eleven in the morning, right? Nine, right, eleven right. in the morning till about two or three in the afternoon. What? So there has been a shift again. We so are, now we're looking at so the Monday, to, and again we are in the middle of again. I, I I do tip my hat to Kenya Kenya Hutton and Earl Folks for oh, working to revamp. Sure. Um, because I do think I mean the reality is that Sizzle came along and put and it 
it gave us a hurting. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Gave, and now that sizzle has sizzled out, um, <laughs> has you, it? Oh, sizzle is sizzled out. Well, man. and then also it's 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 you know I mean it's there's more excitement about the event. People are coming to right. the city. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing that's and happening, it's more economical. The only yeah. other thing that's happening Memorial Day weekend is the um, what is cut some other festivals the, in DR and all the that. The Dominican Republic yeah. event. Yeah. But I do, really, really big I, I do, I do. I do know the um, event for Saturday. That's what I mean. Saturday, Sunday, that was supposed to be at the national park. That was supposed to be more set up as the, as the festival. The, the festival right. event, but it, but it was but it rain, rained, right. and then it had to be switched. Oh, and I think that, and I think that affected it did. some mm -hmm. of the um, some of the communication because it was almost impossible to communicate gotcha. where it was um, going to be. Right. Um, Switching to and like right. Teresa said, I, I didn't I didn't witness. I mean, I know there was a lot of promoters, and I was so proud of all of them. I didn't witness any drama at the. We the didn't Wilson have event. any this year. I, it was well, I, I, didn't, I didn't see any drama. At None any that at least made it to social media. <laughs> no, no. Well, 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 let's give it. Let's give it a few days. So, so, so before we move <laughs> on, thank you, Robert. Before we move on, I, I want to acknowledge we've got two great special guests here. This yes. evening. right. We've been working on them for a, for a minute. We've got Ashley Smith and Ron. Ryan Boss, did I say that right? Ryan, Ryan Boss from Capital Pride, and we'll, yes. we'll tell, we'll share more with them. So they're our special guests. They're getting ready for the Capital Pride event, and which, we're looking forward to. Yes, and we are very exciting this year. We I can't are. wait. I can't wait. I think wait. I'm gonna be on a float. On are Capital you? Pride. Are you? Yes. Are I, you? I, I, I've been Racine, invited to Racine be one. Racine said he's he's doing something with the parade. I was uh, like, she's okay. gonna be like the moderator. A little self promotion. Oh, <laughs> she's gonna be like a moderator or like a um, you know. Oh no! Oh, she's gonna be the uh, she's gonna be like the uh, the commentator, the right? Commentator? Right. Yeah, something okay. like that. I'm supposed to be on the float. I'm looking forward to it. Fears, I'm pushing fears. hard. For I that. might work with the mayor or something. I don't know. But anyway, let's let's get it moving. So so let's get to our news section. Uh -huh. All right. So we've got. Um, Roseanne was canceled by <laughs> ABC. I, I mean, I hate to even talk about this. MSNBC is just dragging it. They I mean, need I, to I drag mean, her. CNN is. I mean, they just they just milked it. I can't. I, I don't see another angle that they haven't explored on. Good this and, so. and and and. <laughs> Good. But do you all think that may, maybe the green, your green jacket represents mental health? It does. I don't, do you it all does. think? You know, no, I, mean, I, did, I don't give her the mental health. Uh, you're not gonna give her that no. either. No, She's because a, they they give that to everybody. Right, right. That's something easy. is wrong with her. She said she was on Ambien, but Ambien, like man, Ambien said, didn't make no, 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 no. That was her. That was her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna backpedal. That was her <laughs> well, backpedal because that came after. But look, here's my thing, Roseanne. ABC and all these people, uh, Melissa Gilbert, all these people, you all, this is not a new Roseanne. Roseanne was calling people monkeys two years ago. Susan well, Rice is the one. And that's what everybody and that's what everybody kept saying. Like if you ago. if you followed if you followed her Twitter, this is nothing new. It's nothing new. A B, she's never been funny. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say well, it right now. I mean, here. I like the show. I, I thought the show funny. I thought the show was funny. I mean, the show was always I mean it was it was never anything unexpected on it. I would watch it occasionally. I thought it was funny. It, it was like a modern day All in the Family Archie Bunker. Uh, thing please don't give her that much right. that much credit. <laughs> All in the Family was groundbreaking. That was well. Just, that was like a play, you know. But I wasn't. But you know what? I really was never mad at her. I was never mad that she wanted that the family to be a Trump family because that's real. That's real. Right. And, and, I and thought that was a great that, angle. That part was a good, very good. Angle. But but but, madam, you tried to make this real life. You tried to make it a reality television show, and sometimes reality television. Television stars bite the dust quickly. Well, you know? I didn't know why. What was the root of the, the, of her of her making that statement? I mean, it wasn't really she, funny. You do know and the why, root. She was on Ambien. But why Valerie? No, Jared? no, no, no. Valerie no, no. Jared is not, not going to give her that. But she's not even going to hold a her accountable. We're she's not going to blame even, it on that on the on the on the peels. We not. We not. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, oh, did they tweet back? Just, yes. They, and, they, they said, don't they, blame us. Did they say no, that? No, they, they said, ambient, as Ambien does have several side effects, racism is not one of them. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> yes, Ambien. Shut Thank up. Thank you, Jacob. I had to catch <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jacob. Ambien <laughs> said, what? Oh, that's funny. Oh, anyway, so let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. My so my child, uh, my child said, um, Drew Sedora is on. I heard you turned it out. At oh, the event. let me, can I just say that real quick? Okay. The, um, um, the event at um, Echo, Stage. Echo Stage was amazing. All the entertainers were great, and we saved the one of the finales. We had two finales for the end for the new talent in DC. Her name is Drew Sedora, yes. and when I tell you, she was absolutely phenomenal. Drew Sedora. Drew Sedora. Sedora. She also is Delonte Simpkins. Yes. Her and the her dancers were great. We couldn't get all the dancers. She had a huge production. Unfortunately, we couldn't because we changed venues. Uh -huh. so she had to mm -hmm. pare it down very she, quickly. Let's say and this. she did that. She started, she had a production with 
32 to 40 dancers. Right. Because she had to reel all the way back to 10. By the way, Ryan, we need to talk. If you, yeah, have, she if you have a spot available... Oh. You it's need a to sickening. I tell you what. I tell you what. I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna on, put. Gotta, gotta I'm gonna put. The, I'm gonna put the performance on my page. Go to my page. Yeah, so and see. so we're gonna go to Tony Nelson's page so we can check out this performance. It was okay. great. I love it. Love it. Okay. So just just one final word on DC Black Pride. It's back, y'all. And if you're not it's here back. during Memorial Day weekend, then you're not at the right place. I just for for the folks around the country. Damn, I wish you, I was 25. You need again. to plan your trip on Memorial Day weekend. Anyway, yeah. that being said, you need to also come to Capital Pride, but we'll talk about that later. Hey, right. Miss Flame, <laughs> we have a legend online. Flame Monroe. Flame Monroe yes, is God. online. Y'all better clap for that later. <laughs> All right, y'all, got, y'all keep me off schedule. So Go we ahead. Got, we've got another news item I have just got to mention. So. Uh, under the, the Trump administration, he has this new rule called for the military, deploy or get out. And that is really for for um, for those those military, um, I guess those in the military who are who are found who test positive for mm-hmm. HIV. And, and I just got wind of this because now OutServe and SLDN and, and Lambda Legal are suing the Pentagon um, As they should. for this because. What is what is happening is if you're HIV positive, that you're not being able to be deployed, and then they're discharging discharging you, uh, and that's not fair, and that's discriminatory, and this has gone under the radar. And I'm glad SLDN and and Lambda Legal have brought this to light, and they're going to sue them. So we're going to keep track of this to see what happens with this. Well, here's a point. Maybe he's projecting. Maybe we should make this bigger. If you couldn't deploy and you got and you you shouldn't even be able to run for public office, so why don't you get out of the presidency? Because you could not deploy. Because Thank you. you. Have foot I think problems. he had foot problems. You right. had foot problems. But were those were those real foot problems, or does that that was so he wouldn't have to serve? That's what I that wish was. the foot was stuck in his butt. I'm oh. so sick of him. Ooh, okay, y'all. That's guess, a lot. That's a whole lot. No more invitations to the White House for us, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. At least not for the next three. Well, two but let's years. go to what's hot now. Let's I'm go not to what's hot section. So, so what's hot? So Sabrina's drag brunch on June third. I hear it's where's gonna be it going to be held? It's going to be in Glen Burning. Right, but I, I, I had a rumor that it was sold out. But it is I'm sold sure. out. Oh, is it sold it's out? sold out. So both shows are sold out. It's sold out. Wow, you, you, go you Sabrina. You saw the flyer. I saw the that flyer. flyer. That flyer makes you want to go right yes. there. I'm saying, great. Well, kudos to Sabrina. Congrats, uh, we Congrats. Check Sabrina. That out. So we have another item. James Lee was was uh, was named International Mr. Leather 2018. This is so huge. Ooh. And we have two pictures of him. I think yes. he's from Kentucky. I, I was getting ready to give you the rundown on who he is. There Are you he ready? Is. Are you ready? Plus, come on, give me okay, the rundown. Okay, so Mr. James Lee is from Kentucky. Ooh. This year they celebrated the 40th anniversary. Can we bring his image up back here? Please bring, bring him it back, back up. Well, I'll talk about this, sir. This handsome <laughs> man. Yeah, he's All right. He's cute. This oh, year, yes. um, Mr. International Leather celebrated its 40th anniversary. Um, James Lee is from um, Kentucky. From Kentucky. Mm-hmm. He was one of 41 contest I mean, 71 contestants that competed, all from all across the United States, Italy, Australia, Israel, France, and Mexico. All right, mm-hmm. all right. He is also um, he's also known for doing a lot of community service with the LGBT community youth, um, and he helped to organize a myriad of different LGBT. Um, fundraising events through the leather community of in course. Kentucky. So well, congratulations, is, James, and, and we look forward to celebrating and to telling more about your story. He's clearly very gifted. He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> and I want to also acknowledge uh, our very own Gerard Turner. Yes. Gerard was the first guest on our show. He was he Mr. Was. D.C. Eagle, and he yes. participated this year. Great. So did, I'm sure he did well. Um, and I, I, again, I'm I sure just, just well. want to reiterate, a lot of times people have a lot of misconceptions about the leather community in particular, and, and I'm going to speak in reference to specifically the pageant arena. Uh, everybody who knows me knows I'm a pageant boy. We is, know. That, is that a pageant too? The, it, the, it, the it Mr. A little bit of a different. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a pageant. However, they have a sh- they stand on community service. Right? Yes, right. Like that's a big thing. The groundwork. So it's not your talent. It's no, not you, how well you no, answer the you question. No, you just can't show up. No, you have to show and <laughs> It's not how pretty you are. You have to do community work. Right. You have to raise money. Right. And it is it is something that I admire. I do too. It, it's it's pageantry with a purpose. And Absolutely. And so I always like to give them their grace because I think that a lot of times people have this misconception about the leather community, but they do their work. They do their work. Sure, sure. So we got we got one other item. Actually, I think I'm going to skip that item, Jacob, so don't worry about that. Let's go right to our musical spotlight because I want to bring our guest on as soon as we can. Okay. So we can talk them up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go to the music spotlight. So there's Todrick Hall doing Thug. Todrick. And then we'll talk about that. Todrick. You know, what's a Thug? Okay, hit it. <laughs> Yo, yo, yo. I used to fuck with the 
them Ken doll types. Nah. Them fem doll types. I had to switch up the hymns I like. Hit the cap with the brims I like. He got that whip with the rims I like. Get that good right swipe. Type that the Chloe and Kim's all like. Kim's all like. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking for a gangster who keep a pretty stack. Now he ain't moving, but he packing in the front and back. You know His name ain't Kenny G, what? but he blow it like a sack. Sagging, he swagging, yeah, he a snack. Give me one up. Them tough lovers. Tough lovers. Good brothers. Them cute boy types, Woo! them fruit boy types. I had enough of them prude boy types. Yeah. I had to switch to them rude boy hey. types. Why can't he talk like them dude boy types? Chopping them screwed boy types. Yeah, he eat booty for food boy types. Food boy types. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking for a hoodlum who got that eggplant. He ain't in Kinko's, but he printing in them sweatpants. When he do it like he do, he make that bed dance. Got a brother doing headstands. <laughs> Catch it. Throw it, classy in the streets, but we ratchet. Give me a, give me a, uh, I need a, I need a, I need a, uh, find me a, find me a, find me a, uh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, uh, give me a, give me a, give me a heartbreaker with the table fade. And he ain't gotta be paid, but he gotta be trade. The way he licking them, licking them lips. Betrayed. The way he thrusting them, thrusting them hips. Betrayed. The way he lean back in the Sadie's. When he driving me, he be driving me crazy. Betrayed. The way he talk real deep when he want it. Betrayed. The way he put it on me in the morning. Betrayed. The way he call me up when he horny. These other brothers can't do nothing for me. Give me one of them tough lovers. Tough lovers. Good brothers. Good brothers. Undercover. Undercover. He got guns like a motherfucker. Bang, bang, throw that thing till he catch it. Throw it. Classy in the streets, but we ratchet. Uh, I need a, I need a, I need a. Uh, find me a, find me a, find me a. Uh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. Uh, give me a, give me a, give me a heartbreaker with the table fade. And he ain't gotta be paid, but he gotta be trade. Tickets to the Forbidden World Tour are on sale now. All, all right. Oh, all right. Oh. Wow. Yes. Hey, Set Ebony. That, that was amazing. Challenging. Uh -huh. now, I know you went to his tour. I did. Tell was me it about good? the tour. I did. It was amazing. Wow. I thoroughly enjoy um, Taja He's talented. Paul. He's talented. Um, I, everybody who knows me knows I love a good production number. And... <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Um, this man gives me everything I want, need, and desire. It is musicals on crack, <laughs> and I live. Um, I wanted to see the Oz tour. Mm -hmm. uh, Welcome to Oz. I missed that tour. And I hear it's selling out around um, the country. And so, I'm actually, sure. shout out to my barber, who actually knows that I'm a fan. So back in January, she bought me tickets for the show that came to Silver Spring oh. for my birthday because she knows I'm a diehard fan of gotcha, Tajik gotcha. Hall. Okay. Oh, wow. But there was one, I guess, one <laughs> element of controversy. One brief, and we'll discuss yes. it briefly. Okay. I know, you know, there's been some... Some challenges, well, some some critics in the community, in the black community, right. say Tajik is is not they, black enough, they or too white, or whatever, whatever. Okay. Wow. And then then on top of that, he goes and does a thug well, sort of theme. I think and there uh, is black male imagery. Well, I think one of the challenges that I have with yeah. the commentary, because I saw the commentary, I saw the commentary, and he responded to it. He did also. respond, mm -hmm. which he normally does not respond to comments. Um, I think one of the challenges that I have is I think I saw I saw the commentary that the person did, um, and I have a challenge with putting people in boxes. I do too. And Absolutely, he's an artist. Especially when you're an artist, I think as an artist, it is your job to tell different stories Absolutely. from different angles. And the the way that they, he came for him, he came for him saying his first his first time he had this song on the, on the Oz album, where he was he was dating a white guy and. 
they were just talking about the shades of colors and they was running around and, and just in love. And so he says, how do you go from that to hmm. you want you want a thug? Well, because so, he's, he's an artist. And, so, and that's what I said. And so right, right. I just thought that it was just taken way out of context. I mean, the last video we showed of him, he was in drag. That, him and, and RuPaul. I and he say, was, was in drag, drag and RuPaul was in, 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 in men's clothes. Was that? <laughs> and that was so, fierce. So anyway, anyway, so anyway, we've got two special people with us here. We've All got right. Ashley Smith. Let me name give these titles. So Ashley Smith is the president of the board of directors for Capital Pride, Capital Pride Alliance. Am I saying that right? Yes. That's right. And then we've got Ryan Boss, who is the executive director of Ryan. Capital Pride. So welcome. I think that's your camera there. You know, your, your camera. Okay. Thank you. Your, there you your, go. Your, your spotlight. You're supposed to know your cue. So I want to welcome Thank the gentleman. You. Yes. Welcome. You know, we are coming up on Capital Pride. We are. And we wanted to make sure you got here so we could talk about it. What is it? The history. A lot of times people don't know what's behind these massive pride movements. So tell us about Capital Pride, what's going on with it, and maybe just a little bit of the, the history of it. Sure. Uh, Capital Pride has been in Washington for, I, I guess this will be our 43rd yeah. Um, yeah. Um, anniversary of celebrating Pride annually in, in D.C., um, though um, there had actually been two years prior to the first annual, um, there had been a, a small little festival. So, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we are in 43 years. Um, Capital Pride Alliance um, took over production of the annual celebration in 2008. So we are actually celebrating. I, I got a story about that. Yeah. I'll tell oh, you about you that because that okay. was Whitman, Whitman Walker. Yes. We were yes. part of the transition, yeah. but yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> we are actually celebrating our 10th anniversary through this year. Um, and next year will be our 10th annual celebration um, coordinated by um, the Capital Pride okay. Alliance. Great, so, great. so that's a quick little history of, of Pride um, um, throughout this year related to the celebration. Um, but as an organization, uh, I think we've evolved um, to think about Pride more beyond just the the annual celebration, which mm -hmm. includes the the annual parade and the festival, um, to also include a variety of other events that happen by many partner organizations. And I think um, Ash and I will both uh, talk, I think, a little bit about more with some of your other questions. But Pride really in D.C. is represented by the many different Pride activities, such as D.C. Black Pride, mm -hmm. such as Trans Pride, which was two weeks ago, wow. um, Leather Pride. Um, as well as we just had a silver pride. Yeah, this we're gonna evening. have a silver pride, we are right? Very yes. pride. Yeah. Yeah. The gays are very pride I'm, for us. Yes. yes, we yes. are. That's <laughs> uh, a new day. I'm not quite at silver pride level yet. But. We're there. That's us. That's us. <laughs> I hate to tell you. No, 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 not yet. Yeah. Not, not yet. quite. That's not us. We there. I hate to tell you. That's us. Mine's just creeping in. <laughs> So, <laughs> so we're just really excited. Just uh, We've been growing our partnerships with the Center for Black Equity, with mm -hmm. D.C. Black Pride. Um, we have some events um, actually during the Capital Pride celebration um, hosted by D.C. Black Pride, okay. as well as Daryl Wilson, Wilson yeah. um, hosting oh, really? a, a day Great. party on Saturday. Yeah. So, um, And we're doing events with um, D.C. Latinx Pride. Oh wow, um, Jose Gutierrez, so. maybe. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be an exciting time. A lot of opportunities for the community. So, to so show what's up. the theme this year? The theme this year is elements of us, uh -huh. and really kind of going back to some of the statements that you were making a few minutes ago. It's truly our community is made up of so many different uh, people, and and you really, when you think about the different elements of our community, it's not one thing. It's several different aspects of it, and we really think as we came up with a the theme this year is that we need to celebrate all of that, and we need to celebrate Latinx. We need to celebrate the uh, Black Pride. We need to celebrate Trans Pride. There's so many other aspects of it, the API community, that we need to all celebrate, but those are just, we those are buckets that we've tried to put ourselves into, and we need to stay away from putting our ourselves into buckets mm -hmm. there's so many other aspects of it right. because we are all when you first look at us we're all men who are here in this room right now yes and, and, and i know they're gonna, i'm gonna get beat up for this i, mm -hmm. I, I know i'm sorry <laughs> but anyway but I'm, I'm just using that as an example we're all men that's what you see first but there's so many other aspects right. that make us up every single day and right. that's really what we're talking about when we talk about elements of us gotcha gotcha wow. and, and speaking of that 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 really leads right perfectly right into a, a video you folks did mm -hmm. to talk about the theme. Uh, Jacob, do we have that elements of us? We do. Let's hit that, and then we'll we'll, we'll explore further. So while he's preparing for that, I just want to give a shout out to Joseph, the um, misunderstood social worker. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. Um, shout out to L Train, one of our writers, Robert hey, York. We see you commenting your way out. Um, DJ Aaron Kelly from Las Vegas. We thank you for tuning in. Do, do you have and a Richard Jacob? Bellamy, no, we, thank okay. you for tuning in. Well, let's hit it. Let's hit it. Like and share, Elements by the way. Of us. Parts. 
I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars. Run away, they say. No one will love you as you are. But I won't let them break me down to dust. I know that there's a place for us. For we are glorious. When the sharpest words want to cut me down. I'm gonna send a flood, gonna drown them out. I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. Inspired. I want to go do backflips now. <laughs> Me too. Run, run We're down ready to see that. I want great my, promo. I want to put my dress on. That's that was an amazing promo. That's phenomenal. So, so, so let's talk about the 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 motive behind pride. Now, I mean, do we need it now? And what is it? Because we like even when we were talking about, it, we talk about lot about the parties, right? But right. so, what is the purpose of pride, and what's the importance of a pride? No, um, festival. Definitely. I think I want to actually share. Um, we actually just came back from a board meeting tonight, and uh, I shared an experience that we had actually at Trans Pride um, two weeks ago, uh, which was hosted at the Foundry Church. Um, there was a little a family with um, children. Um, they saw the Trans Pride flag um, um, painted on the church and saw that it was a welcoming and opening to come in. They came in. They actually had a trans child hmm. and um, didn't know about the event, but felt welcome to come in. And they experienced their first trans pride, and wow. they felt so safe and comfortable. And they stayed with us the entire day. Yeah. And so I think for me that is just again that reinfreshes that point. And I think um, Robert um, posted on on this live feed that every year it's someone's first pride. Right. Right. And, and that's a, um, that is a good point. That's a yeah. good point. It really is. I mean, we take. We live in a bubble and we become so involved. So we take a, you know, we take it for granted the privileges, the luxury of the privileges we have to be open and free. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so especially here in the nation's capital. Right. Yeah. So true. Because the nation's capital is one of the most uh, gay friendly <laughs> environments. And then there, when you think about nationally, there are small pockets across the country where you have a kid who is sitting around who feels like they're the only one. Right. So Absolutely. I think that we oftentimes we do take for granted. Um, I grew up here. I grew, I'm a native Washingtonian, and I so appreciate the privilege to be able to just be me mm -hmm. completely. Totally. So, so, so moving forward. So, so, what about the impact of of pride? I mean, do we have any stories about how it's changed some people's lives? You know, we, we've got some anecdotal stories, I'm sure. But any, I think over the course of time of pride. I mean, I personally did not come out until much later in my life going through the struggle of being an African-American male um, as a preacher's kid, uh, not really you in know, a space. You know, a those PK. are the worst ones. You're a PK. I'm a PK. Oh. Well, we we're the best ones. Means. We're the best ones. Yeah. Yeah. Wild child. Uh, they're the best ones. <laughs> not they're true. The best. <laughs> but more, more importantly is that the experience of pride is what brought, was able to allow for me to finally feel comfortable to be who I am mm -hmm. and to be a free and, and be accepting of who I am. And that's a part of the struggle. And the reason that pride is so very important is because there are so many, this is their first time, but so many other people who are 
awakened from this experience mm-hmm. because they see what's taking place and they see that there's a space where you can truly be yourself and be free and be safe when you're doing it. And that's one of the few places that you can ever do that. And that's typically going to be at a pride. And my very first experience was a black pride in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And so therefore my, exp- my exposure was totally different than what it may have been here in DC mm-hmm. and in Atlanta and in the South, if you will, you did not have the freedom to be completely out. And, and you were, I went to a stage where I actually wanted to go back into the closet and not live freely. And it took me time until I moved to D.C. here about 11 years ago that I actually became free again to come out and to be who I am and to live authentically. So mm-hmm. is there a space and a need for pride? Absolutely. Is there a, a need for it to continue to grow? Absolutely. Because it's also, you, you were talking about Black Pride earlier, it's educational pieces. And I know that you were saying that the numbers were low, and I saw that too in my experiences of being at Black Pride this year. But it is very important that we start educating those uh, com- who are coming through and are having to experience, but also for those who are part of our history, who've made and created the, the pathway for us to be able to live and walk freely today that we did not have years right. ago. Wow. A- amen. 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 Don't, don't you have a question? Well, I was wanting, I wanted to know about the expectations. I saw it on things as well as I was going to ask. What what are the surprises? Do we have anything big that's happening this year at the Pride Festival, mm-hmm. or can you share anything special? That yeah, you what? what for? You know, our entertainers. Who, who's the headliner? Is Beyonce? Is Beyonce? <laughs> is Beyonce who's the headliner what, this year? What, I know this. what I time does Beyonce <laughs> come on? Let I me know. Every Pride has Just that. that you mind, know, back mind. in my first Pride, <laughs> it was always Madonna was going to show up, and now it's Beyonce. <laughs> she's she, she's showing. Well, she Madonna up. is going to show up this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now she might look like Tony. She might be a little tan. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. She's coming. Uh, well, well, let's get well, serious wait, wait, again. I, wait, wait, let's get serious wait, wait. Again. We didn't get a chance to answer. Okay. Do you know who they are? Have you all announced? Or are yes. You we've, we've, Who's the headliner uh, this we, year? We have several headliners, actually. We okay. have a whole concert lineup. So uh, we have, uh, um, actually, the three that we just announced um, this past week were Carrie Hilson. Um, we'll be okay. joining yes. uh, this oh, year's wow. lineup. Um, we have um, Kim Petrus. Okay. Um, who um, will be joining. Um, she's actually um, a trans woman, um, one of the first to have um, gender reassignment surgery. Oh, wow. um, okay. She's becoming up um, very popular and doing a lot of prides um, okay. throughout this season. Um, we also have um, Max, um, who has a song out on top radio now, um, Lights Down Low. Mm-hmm. Troy Savon, um, who is beginning, got in a huge buzz, who has, is an out gay activist, um, mm-hmm. performer. And this year's best new Grammy artist, Alicia Cara, oh, um, wow. is also at this year's um, festival. Wow. Okay. okay. And Great. those of you who watch, anyone who watch RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes. We do. All right. Uh, we have Asia O'Hara. Uh, oh, we'll yes. Year, so. Come on, Asia. So this is going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting. I want to give a, a shout event. out to a couple of people. Tamisha Iman, we love you. You know she's we a, do. She's a writer for us. She's tuning in. Hi, Gemini Star Walker from South Carolina. My sister, Tasha Yarbrough from Ohio. And Nathan- Nathaniel... I think Nathaniel, I know you're from like the Carolinas. Okay. The Carolinas. A fabulous hairstylist. <laughs> so I, I got, but the one question that, that always comes up, I know I do a lot of work with a lot of the black prides around the country is why the need for separate prides? And you sort of addressed this a little bit, mm-hmm. but can you elaborate uh, on, I mean, is there room? For them, and I guess that may be the bigger question. I think that yes, there is. We we still uh, in our country, we have to look at the division that is still placed within our country, and we have not. I mean, we can see what has taken place since that person who's in 1600 has gotten into office, and what that me- has meant to our country. And I think that with e- even in our uh, LGBTQ community, we still have that the divisions that still exist. And we really do need to go back and understand what our history is and those types of things in order for us to come together and be more united. I think that the work that we're doing with all of the different prides here in the city is really to try to get to a space where we will... I'm not ever saying that any one of them should be eliminated, but get to a space where we all come together and we can celebrate and let the capital pride, the, our nation's pride, really be the culminating pride that we would have uh, through in our city. So therefore, we can really celebrate all of the different aspects and elements of us. I think it's a great idea. I that, really that, do. That, that's a new paradigm that should be adapted around around the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think 
I think we're unique. Uh, there are other cities that have black prides, have trans prides, mm-hmm. but I think here in the nation's capital, with these different events, they also they give something different in the they community do. for people to show up and a, a different space for people mm-hmm. to show up. And not everyone is comfortable to be out in a big parade um, 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 throughout Dupont or Logan Circle uh, right. or coming out on Pennsylvania Avenue. But they're comfortable to go to a workshop mm-hmm. um, and learn um, or, or share in that space. So, well, what, what gay doesn't like a parade? I do want to say <laughs> this. Um, I, I do want to say, we were, we were talking about earlier, um, the year that I was Mr. Capital Pride was the 40th anniversary, which was three years yes, ago. Yes, he's a title holder. I'm a, a former, yes, yes. A former, I'm a Mr. former Capital Mr. Capital Pride. Pride. In fact, I'm the third African-American male to win the title. The who? The third African-American male to win Mr. Capital Pride. Yes, yes. Um, and so I was, what I loved... Um, I love to see this year the way that things are coming together because I remember when I when I won, I won like on a Thursday. It was like in the middle of the week. We had the pageant. And then that weekend was Black Pride weekend. And I remember going and I was so elated mm-hmm. to see we had a booth. Capital Pride had a booth at Black Pride oh, wow. that year. Right. Um, and I stood at the table and shook hands and, and walked around with my little sash and I was really, really happy. Um, and for me, that was... Um, the beginning of what I now see was the transition um, because historically it really had been a divide. The one thing I will say that has always been kind of the thread that everybody got excited for, um, even on the black, the, the black community was always excited about the parade because mm-hmm. the parade right. is so massive. Yep. Um, and so it was, um, it was an amazing experience to be able to ride in the float as Mr. Capital Pride on the 40th float. anniversary. Mm. And it, it was an experience I will never forget. And so n- looking at then when I reigned to now to watch, as you said, the way they're coming together and they're culminating into Capital Pride, I am extremely proud to see the growth um, that has happened within the city and the, and the merging of the communities, I think it's absolutely amazing. Great. Great. It's Thank needed. You. I think I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank the, you. The, the one thing I, I wanted to spotlight is you said this is the 10th year of the alliance. Right. And I know, you know many of the prizes are typically run by community-based organizations or pr- primarily aid service organizations. I know I was with Whitman Walker when they had it for a while. And I was really in, encouraged about how it was transitioned out because... Uh, when we when we we moved it out, we made sure that the variety and the diversity of our community was at the table, and I think that's something that that you've done very well is that everyone is represented, and it's not like you just pick and choose who runs it, and then it has a a, a particular look and feel. It, it right. really meets the agenda of one or two groups, but you've got everyone there, and so then everyone has equity in it and invests in it. So. That was great. So I'm, I'm glad that that's been Everyone able feels to, included. to, to feels manifest itself over the last 10 years. I, and I thank you for that. I, I think that one of the pieces that I would like to share with that as well is that that's a constant evolution that we're still mm-hmm. working through. So therefore, you know, I would say that as people see our organization, we've evolved. We're consistently evolving. Mm-hmm. And we would love to have those other voices and those other faces at our table with us. This work is not easy. Ryan and the, the staff that, it, are, that we have are very limited, and they do a phenomenal job. But it takes a lot of work from a lot of the volunteers and the leadership that ha- makes it happen, and we, we have to do it all together. Yeah. This is for our community, right. and we want to make sure we have a great event. So it takes a lot of people to make that happen. I, I, that sounds like a recruitment. <laughs> right. It does sound <laughs> like a recruitment. <laughs> and Biz, I'm, I'm, I remember when Capital Pride first started, and I remember when Black Pride first started. So it's, it's encouraging to hear you say that because I do know that was part of the reason why Black yeah. Pride did start Evolve, because there right. they, they was true. not a feeling sure. of, that, uh, in, of, that, of inclusion, of inclusion right. at that point. Mm-hmm. So it's really good to see you know, that this thing is evolving and it's right. growing and things can come back together and piece themselves right. back together. Because I, in fact, I'm not even going to say, I think I know no, that right. was the reason why. Black, sure, sure. That was the, yeah. the nucleus of Black Pride mm-hmm. starting in the first that's place. Right. Yeah. And that, that, that happens all, that's happened all over the country. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think that just in terms of the, um, I think five years ago, we uh, rebranded ourselves to our legal name, which is Capital Pride Alliance, really mm-hmm. emphasizing the alliance right. piece because mm-hmm. we felt that it was important to begin to show that 
Pride is not just the group of us who are behind the scenes organizing the, the weekend, um, but it's really the, the 200 plus organizations that are choosing to show up to participate in that. Did y'all hear that? 200 right. plus, uh, y'all? 250 organizations plus wow. um, okay. participating in the festival um, and concert. So our community is, is, is expansive um, and is so representative of so many elements. Of us. I have right. a question that just came through. My sister, my biological sister from Ohio, she posted, um, how do you all suggest African Americans in other areas start their own pride events outside of parties? Um, what have you all found to be successful? Well, I think, I mean, and, and I, will, I will just, let's just broaden that. How do people start in their own communities and what have you all found to be successful? Well, I think, uh, Interestingly, I think it's a sign of the times that we're in is I think this year we have seen so many small prides perk up in many small towns mm -hmm. throughout the world and country. And even in my hometown in Michigan City, Indiana, oh. um, they're having their first pride this Yay. year, um, wow. the same weekend as New York. The pride. gays are everywhere. Yo. We are everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, and, and pride celebrations around the world represent a variety of different things. Some include parades. Some right. include things like trans pride where there's days of workshops and like black pride. Right. Um, some are picnics um, and that there's not just one type of pride event and it's mm -hmm. okay to have big large scale celebrations like we do on Pennsylvania Avenue um, and it's okay that we have smaller events where, where folks can show up and, um, and how many people I mean is that like Multiple hundreds of thousands of people that come yeah, out. Yeah, we say um, over the course of the day, um, up to 375, 400,000 people yeah. sort wow. of make their presence known. That's a lot of people, y'all. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I do know the Center for Black Equity has, they, they offer services around helping people build oh, okay. and create pride. Do you want to just say well, something? Well, I was going to say that, I mean, there's several different organizations that are mm -hmm. out there throughout the country that you can actually be a part to get engaged with who are doing prides in your cities. There's a lot of firsts this year that we've heard about as far as their first prides happening in their cities. So really kind of find out what is going on in your city. But if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. We'll be more than happy to try to connect you with other individuals because there's a network of the prides throughout the country and it's ever growing and we would hopefully be able to be able to connect you to someone in your local area. Now do you share some of the sponsorship? Like do they get a cut of your sponsorship? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to go that particular <laughs> far. <laughs> like we're not going that far but, <laughs> okay, but at least I want to make sure that people feel that they can create a space for them in their home city. And you know, you should know that website is interpride.org. Um, Interpride is that international that, association right. okay, that, cool. um, where we right. all kind of connect. Now tell us about the honorees. I know you do some great honorees every year I did see one of our you know one of our good friends Samantha yes. mm -hmm. Masters, Masters. Mm -hmm. shout out to Samantha she's being honored hey, Samantha. but tell us who's Samantha. being honored this year so we have uh, Samantha Sanders uh, we also have um, I'm, I'm skipping Samantha name Masters. Greg uh, I'm sorry Samantha Masters Samantha Masters, Masters. Yeah. I'm sorry uh, we also have Greg <laughs> Sedana and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the, uh, the names Greg, Greg Sedana Greg oh, Sedana okay okay Sedana. okay, okay. Uh, we're getting ready to pull up the whole list. Well, here no, in a yeah, second, we, we'll, we'll, we'll direct we, people to the site. Don't yeah, worry about to, that. Um, Capitalpride.org hey, forward slash gala. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and our Heroes Gala this year is a little different. Um, we're going to be on the roof um, deck of 880P oh. um, in Shaw. Okay. And it's going to be on June 7th. Okay. Uh, so this will be a sort of start of the Thursday evening because following that, um, DC Latinx Pride has their big dance party okay. at wow. town. Mm -hmm. um, um, their last time, obviously, having their big big event at mm -hmm, town, mm -hmm. unfortunately, with um, town closing. Yeah. Um, and then a few of other events will ha will happen beyond that, including... And what's, the, what are the dates? What are the... The, 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 the main the dates? weekend dates, I mean, we start on the 4th is one of our... Well, we started already last month. Let's just be honest with that. <laughs> oh, my but, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but our, our upcoming events for next week are going to be really kind of starting on the Monday, the 4th, uh, where we have a spoken word. There's going to be a busboy and poets. Uh, great opportunities really a lot of women are really driving that particular event okay. uh, so we will be doing that then obviously we have some events that are taking place on Tuesday Wednesday we do have an event that's going to be taking place at the Library of Congress with uh, Call Me By Your Name the uh, writer of that and then we also have another event that's going to be going on that evening so the, all of this is on our website then you go to Thursday we have the Heroes Gala that we were just talking about uh, Friday we have our opening party which will be at Echo Stage this year so kind of following up what we did mm -hmm. with Black Pride okay. and then on Saturday obviously the parade is going to be great but we have a uh, 
uh, brunch there at noon that's going to be held at HRC, uh, and then leading right into Sunday with the, the festival. festival. Uh, and oh it's going to be all day, uh, and, and we'll be tired on the other end of it. But I'm it's exhausted gonna be great. already. <laughs> I'm the tired. festival is amazing. It, it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we storm a Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. And I get my life every year. And, and, so, and we can go to Capital Pride. CapitalPride.org. Uh, and okay. there's an events calendar. And there's so many events happening that are um, not just organized by us, by, but organized so by so many community partners and organizations in our community. And uh, there is definitely something for everybody. Well, well, it sounds like we, first of all, we need to get involved. That, yes, that's we what do. I, I heard. I heard a plea for our voices, for everyone's voices to be there. So I'm sure there's some volunteer opportunities. There is. So, we still have quite a bit of volunteer opportunities still needed for this upcoming week. Okay. So please just let us know. Come to our website, mm-hmm. capitalpride.org okay. slash volunteer, and you can and sign And actually, up. if you are a or- nonprofit organization looking to raise some money, um, we have opportunities for some working grants where you can mm-hmm. do some shifts and earn some money for your organization. Wow. Cool. And I remember last year you guys did a really nice gesture in, all, in, in allowing a Check It group to participate, and, and I was really, really inspired by that. And you got them to participate, and you even featured them in the program book mm-hmm. that you did. Yep. So hats off to you for that. Yes, thank you. So, so um, we're going to close the show in, I in a minute or so. We, we definitely need to have you all back because there was some topics that I wanted us to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Um, recently, that's in, always the case. Recently <laughs> in Swerve Magazine, um, Racine did a, um, in our current issue, um, Racine did a article go "There Goes the there Neighborhood," goes, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and um, <laughs> yeah, I would really be interested in hearing you guys' Get perspective, perspective about. That. About um, the dismantling of a lot of our pocket gay neighborhoods in DC, but and that's, and that's whole, happening all over the country. That's all, yeah. Yeah. all over the well, country. I, I, that'll be a great conversation to have you in. Well, I, w- I want to make sure we thank everybody. Of course, I want to thank Ashley and and Ryan for thank for you. joining thank us. You. Thank I know they, you. you know, they've got a lot on their plates the next couple of weekends. We're just going to go party, and let, we'll let them do all the work. <laughs> we'll let you do the work. <laughs> we're right, we're right. looking forward to making sure that we see all of you all throughout oh, we're the going entire day. Day. <laughs> All right, don't wave over the cocktails. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, please do. And I want to thank Tony Nelson for joining us. I know he's exhausted from last week, and y'all didn't know why. And I want to give my speech that I give. Yes, give your speech. Today is you're wearing the, green. Today I'm wearing green again. <laughs> again, um, I've been wearing green for the entire month of um, month of May. May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, thank you for putting thank up. You, this is uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. If you um, are having some mental health challenges, if you are in depression, if you need to talk to someone, please feel free to call this number. It's 1-800-273-TALK. It is, I promise you that mental health and therapy works. I am a prime example of it. And I support this 125%. I even brought a green bottle today. Uh All right, (laughs) right, folks. We're going to have to go. And with all of that, I want to say... Um, With mental health, um, I lost myself. And sometimes losing yourself allows you to rediscover your greatness. Okay. Okay. All right, folks. So we'll see you next week. Good night. June is... African American Music Month, right? Ooh. And we're going to celebrate. We got a that. lineup for so, you for two. Baby. So look out for that. We'll see you next Wednesday. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. Listen, vision. Listen, DC's number one recording studio. Oh, 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 oh. Number one recording studio. Oh, oh.